Must you love Jesus to be saved? Must you love Jesus to stay saved? Now, this is really simple. If you believe what God says. Now, God warns us at 2 Corinthians 11, 3. Don't let your minds be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. This is real simple. All right, first question. Must you love Jesus to be saved? Well, we're going to go to Acts 16, 30, 31. The most direct question in the entire Bible on how to be saved. And we'll see if love is a requirement. This is what Acts 16, 30, 31 says. And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. So, must you love Jesus to be saved? No. It wasn't there, was it? All right, now if you want more details on how to be saved, how to have everlasting life, please look at these two videos pinned to the top of my page. They're videos 152 and 153. All right, no requirement, requirement to love Jesus to be saved. And I want to emphasize, you are saved a moment in time. The moment you put your faith, belief, trust in Jesus, him alone, and nothing else. And that's really important for the next question in this video. I did a video on the moment, the exact moment a lost person is saved. That is video 180. All right, on to our second question. Must you love Jesus to stay saved? Well, Jesus will tell us, this is so simple, at John 6, 47, when he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath now immediate everlasting life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. So the moment you believe on Jesus, you have everlasting life. You stay saved because you have everlasting life. The moment you believed on Jesus, you don't stay saved by loving Jesus. So, second question, must you love Jesus to stay saved? No, you don't do anything to stay saved because Jesus said you have everlasting life. It's not probationary life. It's not temporary life. It's not tentative life. It's not conditional life, conditioned on whether you love Jesus on whether you obey all the commands of Jesus, on whether you keep the Ten Commandments, on whether you get water baptized, no matter what your behavior is. It's everlasting life. You can't lose your salvation. Now, some people are going to get so excited right now, and they're going to start screaming, you need to go to Hebrews 6, 4, 6 and read it, and you'll see that you can lose your salvation. No, you can't. Because Jesus said you have everlasting life. That means you are misinterpreting Hebrews 6, 4, 6, or any other verse that you want to run to. A born-again Christian cannot lose their salvation before the rapture. What about loving Jesus? Now, I didn't love Jesus the moment I got saved, and I didn't love Jesus the next morning. But here's what happened to me when I got saved. I got the Spirit of God in me, and he was working on a lot of things on me. Look how he works. Look at Philippians 2, 12, 13, Hebrews 13, 21, and Colossians 1, 29. The Spirit of God is working in you. Now, I personally was a carnal Christian for 18 years. I did a video on that. It's video 154. But the Spirit of God was in me. I started reading my Bible. I was not a dedicated Christian. I went to church once in a while. But I did start thinking about God more. I wonder why. Because the Spirit of God is in me. Working on me. One thing, I realized all the ways God had blessed me in my life and was continuing to bless me in my career. And I recognized that. Why? 
because the Spirit of God, I think, was working on me. I got closer to God. Now, I can't remember the exact day, but I think it was about two years after I got saved where I realized I finally loved God. Now, some people are going crazy right now. Oh, oh, you had to love God a week after you got saved or whatever. No, it takes time. Remember, we've got the Spirit of God in us. I want to read you Galatians 5.22. I'm going to read the whole verse, and then I'm going to come back and address the first part of the verse. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. The first part again. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. God was in me working, producing fruit, and I finally loved God. Now, I'm going to give you an illustration of fruit. Suppose you go to the store today and get you some apple seeds, and you plant those apple seeds in your backyard this afternoon. Are you going to have apples the next morning? <laughs> of course not. It takes time to produce fruit. Same with a Christian. Listen to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. Those apple seeds are going to have to grow in your backyard to eventually produce fruit. The same with Christians. All this fruit is not automatic. It doesn't happen the day after you get saved. Bottom line, you don't have to love Jesus to be saved. You don't have to love Jesus to stay saved because you have everlasting life.